Let me tell you something. If you didn't know already, your words, they matter. If you read the book of James, you'll find that it mentions the power of words. In fact, in chapter 13, it says, the tongue also is a fire. Think about that. A fire. Why? Why would a tongue be likened to a fire? You see, what James is trying to tell us is that the same fire that brings warmth to the house is exactly the same fire that can burn that house down. What kind of fire are your words igniting up? What kind of fire are your words lighting up? What kind of fire are you speaking? What flames come out of your mouth? You see the thing about our words? Once they ignite, they ignite hope, ignite healing, ignite joy and love. Words have impact when you speak. Words can hit someone and destroy them emotionally without you ever touching that person. But words also have life. And child of God, learn how to speak. Learn how to declare. Learn how to claim things into existence. And for those that say, we as people cannot physically create something with our words, so we can't speak things into existence. Don't play with the semantics. Indeed, only God can speak and create, but God has also spoken several promises in the Bible. And as a believer, we can speak those promises into existence concerning our lives. God says, if it aligns itself with my will, if you speak it in my name, if you believe and have faith that I can, then your words can move things in the spiritual realm. Prayers can be answered. When words are spoken in line with the will of God, with the word of God, then healing will happen. Marriages will be restored. Ideas will become a reality. Generational curses are broken. God tells us in his word that the tongue has incredible power. When you use words the right way, they have the power to move mountains. And equally, if you misuse your words, If you speak without being mindful of your words, they can cause your entire life to go up in smoke. We are told repeatedly in the word of God to be mindful of our words. 1 Peter 3.10 For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Colossians 4 and 6 Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Ephesians 4, 29, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Proverbs 10, 19, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. Proverbs 15, 4, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Proverbs 21, 23, those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. Over and over again, the Bible repeatedly tells us in different ways the same message. Words matter. Your words matter. But I really want to focus on one particular verse. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And before we go any further, remember that God himself spoke the universe into existence. Now we are not God, but we are children of God. And by that virtue, we have been told to ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened. We have been told that life and death is in the power of the tongue. We've been told that a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Repeatedly, we too have the message that we can speak things into existence concerning our own lives and in line to the many promises of God. So when I say speak things into existence, it's not a case of speaking a new car into existence so that you can be filled with pride as you drive around turning heads in the latest vehicle. 
but start speaking the word of God upon your circumstances. If it's a promotion you want, start saying, I am the head and not the tail. God, please promote me. If it's a skill you need, start saying, I can do this because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You should begin practicing speaking things into existence because when you speak it, you hear it. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you begin to speak the word of God audibly, repeatedly, you will constantly be hearing the word of God. And that is when faith comes. So if I keep speaking, Romans 8, verse 37, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. If I keep speaking, Deuteronomy 28, 13, the Lord has made me the head, not the tail. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that's in me than he who is in the world. If I repeatedly declare the word of the Lord, I hear it. My faith grows. My belief grows. My thought life begins to change because I'm meditating on the word of God. When we are speaking the word of God, we are not just saying feel good sentences. The word of God is living. It's true and it's powerful. When we speak his word into our own lives, that's when we can begin seeing the power of words. Secondly, speaking the word of God brings life. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. So our tongue is capable to speak life to situations we face, to people we interact with, to the children we raise. A great example is that if you ask people what has caused the most pain in their life, you will find that the words spoken to them or about them by someone who they loved or trusted had more of an effect than any physical pain they may have ever felt. That's because words can touch emotions and anything that can move you emotionally is capable of having a lasting impact on your life. For one student, a teacher telling him that he'll never amount to be anything would lead him and motivate him to be a successful entrepreneur all because those words hurt and they lit a fire inside that impacted that person's future. That same teacher can say those same words to another student and that student will never amount to anything because they give up and believe those words. Words can have lasting effects on people. Your words can speak life into your own situation. If you're facing an illness, tell yourself that by his stripes, I am healed. Jesus has come to give me life and life more abundantly, and you will see that your faith grows. The third reason why you should be speaking things into existence is because the Bible says you are snared by the words of your mouth. In Proverbs 6, 2, other translations say trapped or caught. Either way, these are very strong and graphic descriptions of the effect of words. Words can entangle you or impede you if you don't take enough care when speaking. Let's apply this to the world. Police say the statement, anything you say can and will be used against you. There we see the importance of the spoken word. Sports psychologists train top athletes to constantly speak to themselves in a positive way. There are plenty of positive self-talk programs or mindfulness programs that are designed to impact an athlete's physical performance through what they are speaking and telling themselves. So rather than being trapped or snared by negative words, be trapped and snared by positive words, by the living word of God. The fourth reason you should be speaking things into existence is because the enemy will hear it. As you speak the word of God and your faith grows, rest assured that you are reminding the devil of the power of God. You are reminding him of the victory that you have in Jesus Christ through speaking the word of God in your own life. You are doing everything that he doesn't want. You're building your faith. The word is renewing your mind. You're growing in belief and confidence in God. And ultimately, you realize the power that God has given us. Luke 10, 19 says, God has given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. 
nothing will harm you. Words matter. In many ways, words control us. The words we use define us. The way we speak to or the way we speak of others reveals our character. Remember the words of the psalmist who said, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And we need that same spirit. If what I am saying is not pleasing in his sight, then it's not profitable for me to even say. May I also remind you to never miss an opportunity to encourage someone. The words of encouragement you offer someone today might stay with them for a lifetime. So be careful with the impact of your words. Mature Christians build each other up in word and in deed. Our words matter, and the word of God matters even more. Speak it over your life. That's how you speak things into existence. Your words matter. Choose them wisely. The biggest problem that the Pharisees had with Jesus wasn't where he went. It wasn't who he was with. It was what he said. They didn't want Jesus to preach because his words would do more damage than anything else. The word of God is powerful. To the person struggling to find a purpose in life, it says, before you were born, God already knew you. He sets you apart. To the person who's plagued with a worrying mind, it tells them to be anxious for nothing, but in everything through thanksgiving and supplication, make your requests known to God. The word of God was such a danger because it gave hope to the hopeless. It told a person who was weighed down with problems to cast your burdens on the Lord and he will sustain you. It told the one who was so low in confidence and strength that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Peter even said, the words that you speak to us are spirit and they are life. When words go out, they produce something. Psychological or emotional pain is often more painful and lasting than physical pain. In fact, there are studies that demonstrate that the pain caused by emotional distress is more deeply felt and longer lasting than that caused by physical injuries. It takes just a few words to hurt someone. And although wounds may heal, just as physical wounds will leave a scar, hurtful words, they too, leave a scar that will never disappear. And when someone becomes a Christian, you see, your freedom of speech needs to be sensitive to the Word of God. And that's because the Bible teaches us that there is power in our words. In Colossians 4 verse 6, the Bible states, Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. So your freedom of speech needs to be sensitive to the Word of God. It needs to be regulated by the Word of God. And you and I need to adopt a culture, a godly culture of being sensitive to others when we speak. A child of God has to restrain his or her tongue. A child of God has to exercise self-control. The book of James talks of the tongue saying the same tongue that we praise our Lord and Father with is the very same tongue that we curse other people with. Other people who have also been made in God's likeness. But it should not be like that. In our speech, in our words, we must avoid cutting remarks. Because when you deliberately say words to hurt someone, when you throw around comments which are intended to injure other people's feelings, then how are you going to use that very same mouth to sing praises to God? Your speech should be articulated in a godly manner, even if you need to emphasize a point. You see, words have power. They have life. 
they can bring someone joy or misery. Proverbs 18 verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Meaning that our tongues can build others up or they can tear them down. Your words have power to speak life or destruction to someone. But the other thing that you should keep in mind is how your own words can affect you. How they can shape your life. How they can impact your future. So stop saying things like, I can't do this. Stop saying things like, I'll never be able to afford that. Stop saying negative words. Choose your words carefully so that they will have a positive impact on your own life. So that they will have a positive impact on your children, on your family and on your loved ones. People are quick to avoid sins like stealing, adultery or drunkenness. But they are comfortable in assassinating a fellow believer through gossip. Through their words, they leave a trail of destruction. Words that are tearing other people down. But yet you still use your mouth to praise God. Words have the power to destroy a fellow believer. My words can determine what sort of a person I am. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's in your heart? Because whatever is in your heart is what you speak. A child of God should have words full of compassion and love. My words determine whether I am a blessing to others or not. Husbands hurt their wives with the words they speak. Wives also lash out at their husbands with the words they speak. But Proverbs 14 verse 1 says, The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish one pulls it down with her hands. And the Bible means she does not tear it down with her physical hands, but it's the words of her mouth which pulls it down. Either by harsh or unkind words, or by constantly speaking negative words. And this goes for both husbands and wives. Parents have also devastated their children's lives with the words they speak. Words like, you will never amount to nothing. The words of a parent has the power to determine a child's future. And so I hope you're beginning to see this picture of words. They can ruin relationships. They can destroy marriages, tear down families. If they are used carelessly and recklessly. In fact, Proverbs 12 verse 18 says, Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. A child of God can make a choice either to use words which can pierce others or use words which uplift and bring healing to someone. Words which can break someone's heart and spirit. And you need to be careful about the damage that your words can cause because broken bones will heal with time, but a broken heart, a broken spirit caused by words, that's not easily repaired. It will take God, the only one who can bind and heal broken hearts. That's why Psalm 34 verse 18 says, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Words have power to cause a person to bleed. Words have power to cause wounds and scars which will remain long after the words have faded away. In Deuteronomy 30 from verse 14 it says, But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. Children of God, we are to choose life with our words and there is power in prophesying positive words over your own life. There is power in declaring good things on your own life. 
Start speaking to yourself. Start speaking over yourself. I am blessed. I am good enough. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. God is with me. I am successful. Begin to declare good things over yourself. And while you do that, be mindful. Don't be too quick to criticize and hurt other people. Don't be too quick to criticize and hurt yourself. Speak and speak freely. But think of the effects and the impact of your words. Yes, there is freedom of speech. But a child of God should have the word of God as a filter over their mouth. The psalmist pleaded with God in Psalm 141 verse 3. He said, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Meaning that there must be some sort of control, something that regulates the words that come out of my mouth. And we need to pray this prayer too. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Words that come out of our mouth should minister grace and peace to everyone under the sound of our voices. As children of God, we need to know that when we speak, God is listening. He hears every word that we say. Whether our words edify and bless others or whether our words hurt and curse them. And the Lord will bring every idle word that we speak to judgment. So if the day of judgment was tomorrow, how would you account for the words that you speak?